for the first time in my life, I thought, okay, this is it. I'm going, I'm going to die. On Friday, September 29th, a Gaul Airlines Boeing 737 with 155 people aboard was lost in Brazil's Amazon rainforest after colliding with a small American-registered business jet. That plane, on which New York Times columnist Joe Sharkey was traveling, made an emergency landing half an hour later. We were flying back from San Jose. Everybody's quietly working or taking pictures because they were proud of the fact this was the inaugural flight. And we're flying northwest. Uh, it's becoming late afternoon, northwest uh, toward Manaus. The sun is on our left. I'm sitting, working on my laptop over the left wing. I have the shade pulled down. Everything is calm. Every, there's, there's no indication that there's any problem whatsoever. And suddenly, boom, the first thing I did was I looked at the cockpit. The cockpit door was open, and I, I tried to get the body language from the two pilots. What I saw was two pilots who were anxiously but competently working together. But I saw we had a situation. I then opened the window, the window shade, and my heart sank because I looked out, and at the end of the wing, the, the, uh, this is the left wing, the winglet, which is, which is a five-foot section of wing that, that curls up, had uh, been sheared off. All that was left was a jagged six-inch part of the winglet. I've been in situations before. I've been in planes that were hit by lightning. I've, you know, I spent uh, years in naval aviation. I thought, this is a bad situation. This could be trouble. And I said to one of the, one of the uh, one of my colleagues on the plane, one of my friends on the plane, an engineer, how bad is this? He looked at me and he said, I don't know. And I said, well, what do you see? He said, uh, he explained that part of the wing was starting to uh, uh, deteriorate, that the, the skin of the wing was starting to come up. We stowed our gear. Uh, I noticed I wrote and a couple of others wrote notes to our wives or loved ones or children or whatever. Quickly, we didn't have much time, folded them and put them in our wallets, figuring, well, if the worst happens, maybe they'll find the wallet. The pilots later told me there were two pilots uh, that... They were thinking seriously because they didn't, there was no airport that they could find in the area. This was just hundreds of miles of wilderness, uh, of looking for a clearance to ditch it. Because one pilot said, I've read too many cases where afterwards, after a fatal crash, the experts have said if only they had tried to put it down, they would have had a better chance. We were going way fast. They call it coming in hot. I saw the pilots uh, struggling physically. To, to, to wrestle that plane in. Finally brought the airplane to a stop. We waited, no explosion. Uh, we're shaken, but we're alive. We got off. We were shocked to see the damage on the tail. We're now on a, on a military base where we were quick, quickly surrounded. What we, what we didn't know was what happened. One of our members came back, the only one who spoke Portuguese. He had been at the command office, and he said, uh, a civilian airliner went down at the same time we had the impact in the same area. And suddenly what had been a macho, jovial atmosphere, because as far as we knew, all, all we had was a damaged plane in our lives, became tragic and sad. 